Hi everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from Sound for More. It's Leo speaking. Today we are going to start our journey on how to use space fields in more details. And we're going to start with a tutorial that will show you how to create and initialize or default presets, which I recommend that you create because it will become handy in terms of explaining the different parameters features of the audio processor. And we'll also go through the input and output section of the uh, audio processor itself. I hope you enjoy, so let's go straight into it. Thank you. Okay, let's start with the basics in space fields. And the first thing I would like to do is to create a init sound or a default preset, as I mentioned in the introduction to this video. So I'm, I'm inside the AUM and I'm going to use the for the AUV3 version of space fields. So let's click on the plus sign and create an audio channel and let's insert uh, space fields as uh, an insert effect or as an audio processor. So we'll scroll down to reveal the search and we we'll select FI as a shortcut that will uh, enable the immediate retrieval uh, via search of space field. Choose the AU version or the UV3 version. So let's click on the uh, input node and let's select the ground piano as a um, audio unit. Let's bring up the AUM keyboard and connect it to the ground piano. Perfect. So let's maximize now the uh, space fields uh, window. So let's double click on the header uh, or on the window title here. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, we need to create a, a, an initialized preset. You might want, be wondering why. Well, it's because it will help with explaining the different concepts of uh, how to use space fields without getting confused because if we have uh, all the different parameters and dials set to the default zero then it's very easy to focus exactly on the parameter that we are explaining now what i would like you to do is to select one preset like this one for example of uh, century then uh, click on new and you will see there is a new one created which says alpha century one so click on that and then select the rename and then rename that, I call it init, and then I press on OK. And the, as you can see, we have a new init preset, and I also click on the set button and on the X to come out. Now, is that is all um, very well and good, but um, we have uh, still all the different parameters set here as uh, in the original preset, the alpha century, which is not what we want. So what I'd like you to do now is to double click on all the parameters to set it to, to set the, the, the parameter to default. So if I start on the reverb, I double click on it. It will say 50. Now that is not zero. And so, and that is one exception. So I suggest you click and hold and move this down to zero like so. But in terms of all the other parameters, let's go through all of them, double click, and you will see in some cases, it will, said, uh, it will say off, like in this case, it will set it to off. So I recommend that you do this for uh, all the different uh, parameters that you have on the screen, like so. And let's do that also here where it says I pass filter. Okay, next, what I would like you to do is, as I explained in the previous video, you can click on a single click to change the parameter you want to change in this case uh, on this dial which i'm highlighting here on uh, we were on the mix parameter if you click again you have this highlight in the middle so you go to change the delay um parameter so let's do that for uh, all uh, the others and then let's double click on each one of them to set them as uh, default and then of course if you want to exit the parameter go back to the uh, parameter that is set by default just uh, um, click once and it will come out and you see the different um, highlight there okay so do the same for all the other parameters so um, single click like so very quickly oops like that and then double click on each one of them like so so that we set them all to zero and then you can click uh, oops again um once to come out from that selection of the parameter like so you need to be quick if you have a mouse in terms of clicking like so 
and let's repeat the process for uh, um, all the other parameters like so double click again to reset them okay and then click again to come out from that um, selection like so Oop. one click one click one click and then change the parameter here I'm not going to do this one because it's already set by default so I can click on this one this one and this one as well and then double click double click double click so I reset them and then single click quick uh, like so to come out from the selection of that specific parameter now we do the same here so what it says that length and threshold so we click to go to threshold double click okay and then click again quickly to come out from the selection of the threshold threshold to length we do the same on the other two as well And let's not, don't forget here the saturation. So let's click on that. Double click again, then let's click on that to come out. Now, the next thing I want you to do is to set here the mode from out to um, the direct. As you can see, you can say it goes to direct here because um, at the bottom here uh, for each of the output, the, each of the a playback output you have this symbol which is stand for active which is being highlighted for all three playback output okay let's also select here what it says filter and for in this case notch click on it and let's go and set it to low pass for all of them and also let's set the chorus here to off like so so clip keep clicking until you go to off like so Okay, ensure that the EQ here is off and here is direct and no reverse for the reverb. Then also let's ensure that here the um, auto gain control is uh, set to off as well. So keep clicking until it goes to off. Now that's not all. So click where it says auto here, here, here for all the uh, free outputs. And we need to do the same for all these controls. So double click on each one of them to reset them like so here we go and then click on each one of them uh, to change uh, to the next parameter double click to reset it and then you can come out and unfortunately you have to do that for um, all of them okay so we've done that this one double click click again to come out this one click double click and then click again and repeat the process for all the others as well um, so that um, um, double click double click double click double click so we can come out now from each one of them like so click single click and then we do the last line here the last exit so click 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 then double click double click double click double click and then click again to exit that random in this case and this is times 10 and this random again and then times 10 okay and then we can go back to the uh, default uh, view of the parameters for each of the output now at this point I suggest you click save and now we have our uh, preset which is uh, initialized and if everything is okay you click on it you will hear, of course, the piano because the dry and wet setting is set to 50%. Okay, if you were to move this up to 100% wet and you click on the keyboard, you don't hear any sound because it makes sense because none of the outputs are on. Okay, so that's important in terms of following the next tutorial because as, um, let me show you, if we go to an, another preset, click in here, on the arrow, we can click play. Then let's click on clear. And then we can go back to the our init preset and we know how that works. Okay, perfect. So now you have an init preset. So let's go through uh, the explanation of the input and output section here starting from the left hand side and um, so the first dial 
allows you to change the input level and it's pretty straightforward so if i, I just um you can increase the the level or decrease it as well so you increase the amplitude or vice versa as you can hear it gets louder or quieter so double click on it to set it default to default now you can do the same for the output level which is different than the input level because these will be when um, everything has gone through the processing And in order to demonstrate that, if you set the dry and wet mix to 100% wet, you know that you don't have any output. And the reason you don't have any output is because the free playback here, I have all the levels set to zero. So, but if I change the level on the first one, you start to hear now that uh, uh, sound coming out and therefore going through the processor. Now, if I go to the output level and change that, you can hear I can increase it or I can decrease it as well. Okay, so hopefully that is, uh, um, that explains how that works. So the next control is dry and wet. So as the names say, you can uh, set it completely wet. So you will hear only the signal which has been processed or um, you can set it the other way, completely dry. So you hear the input signal, right? And of course, uh, you can set it somewhere in the middle as well, depending on uh, uh, your preferences as well. Next, we have uh, a dial where that you can use to set your uh, high um, pass frequency. So, um, and with the dial, you change the frequency, okay? So, and, um, let's uh, um let's actually change sound let's um, uh, load something different uh, as a unit uh, as an audio unit like ISM as well and uh, let's connect the keyboard and let's try this one <laughs> Let's set it to wet because otherwise you will not hear the difference. And let's increase the level here. Okay. A bit of reverb. Okay. Let's set it to somewhere different than the maximum of wet. And let's change the high pass, the high pass filter now. If you click on this parameter, you have access to the saturator as well. So um, let's try again. Uh, here we go. And that is a little bit more subtle to actually hear it, but hopefully you can. have headphones that is adding those additional harmonics and you will see in some of the next tutorials that if you decrease the pitch then you can hear it a little bit better as well okay so um let's exit that one so we go back to the high pass filter in terms of selection then Below you have a selection of how to treat the input signal. So you can have it set to stereo, so it will take left and right and process it accordingly. You can have it mono, which means that it takes the, the left and right input signal, mix it together and treat that as a mono for both channels. Then you can have it to set to left, so it takes only the left um, input signal and then use that uh, for processing the same on right, of course, and remember that the output will always be stereo. 
Next, you have an effect on and off, and that is really to um, bypass um, the effect itself. Okay, something else I wanted to show you, now let me asset the output level down to zero, okay, is these uh, um, indicators here at the bottom of this input-output uh, um, section. So they measure if the input is coming from the left and right channel. So when I click on the keyboard, you can see it says input left and input R, which are active. So you know that the signal is coming through, okay. At the moment, the meta here is down to zero because the output is zero itself. So if I was to change that, you of course see now the output represented here on this uh, um, green meter. So you know the for how to look for the input signal, which is coming from these indicators here, and the output signal, which is coming from there. Okay, so hopefully you have managed to follow me through. So we have created an initialized preset, which we are going to use now in the next tutorials. I explained how the input and the output uh, section works. So hopefully that is self-explanatory. Perhaps the one parameter that you is difficult to hear it a little bit sometimes is the saturator, but that depends also on the input signal that you have uh, available. And I will show you in other tutorials that change in the pitch and other parameters on the output, you can hear that uh, better. But after all, that saturator is not there to make, it, to make a dramatic change because you have other parameters that you can choose to use to create the special fields sound that you're looking for. In the next tutorial, we'll go through the loop section and that is very interesting and that uh, has a lot of different options so i will dedicate a food tutorial which is coming up next okay i hope you enjoy see you next time bye